They say a man who represents himself has a fool for a client. Well, with God as my witness, I am that fool. What's up, my wizards? Dev from the place with the decks. We got something hilarious for you today, and I'm not playing with that title. You want to top eight an invitational for just five bucks? We actually have a thing for you today. Well, as I was cruising Star City the other day for deck lists and stuff, just from news and whatever articles, I found that this came in seventh place at the Star City Games Invitational. This is all in Molten Vortex, and you really don't need much to put this deck together, and it's actually got a keen little edge in the format right now, so let's, let's go ahead and check this out. I'm really, I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> Before I get into the list, the award for the biggest balls in magic goes to Joe Effinger, I think that's right, or Joe Joey Fingers, I'm going to call him. Joey Fingers, for the rest of the video, this guy not only had the cojones to enter this in an invitational, he took seventh place. Like, this guy is winning tiger blood all day. Good job. Good job, Joey Fingers. Well, here's the list. We're playing four copies of Molten Vortex. We're playing four copies of Magmatic Insight. Four copies of Tormenting Voice. I can put all three of these cards up at the same time, because those are the only cards you're playing in the deck other than Basic Mountains. That's it. There's four, three play sets of these cards, or yeah, yeah, play sets of these three cards right here, and that's all you need. That's it. It's Molten Vortex. You usually mulligan until you get a Molten Vortex in your opening hand, um, but you don't really want to mulligan past five. You know, it can be done, but you don't want to mulligan too low. Very often you'll be able to mulligan to, you know, six if you don't have it in your opening hand, and it's right there, you know, for a play set. We'll do that for you. <laughs> you know, you can you get guarantee in your opening hand, but it's very, very often and you can mulligan to, you know, six or five and you'll find it. Um, very important to the deck. That's what the deck does. And the, obviously the other two cards are just filters, you know, card advantage, well, card selection really in both cards. But very, very important to the deck, especially if you're digging to get the Molten Vortex that you don't have yet. Or if you're just trying to, you know, get more lands in your hand and get the stuff out of my hand. Just cycle through cards faster so you can put more lands in your hand and deal some damage. Aside from that, we're playing 48 Mountains. The deck. So here's the entire list right here. The deck does have a sideboard, but we're running mostly mountains in the sideboard, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the roast helps us out in our worst matchup, which is against anything playing Siege Rhino right now. But luckily, the decks playing Siege Rhino have sort of curved off a bit. Abzan is not the most important deck in the format. It's still one of the best, but it's not one of the decks that people are playing, especially considering a couple of other decks at the top end right now. Um, just destroy Abzan, finally. But the Siege Rhino is still an important presence in the format, and it, it hurts us a lot. You know, that is our worst matchup. Now, here are your power rankings for the deck. A final score of 52. Doesn't sound like much, and we're obviously low in some categories. I'm not even really sure how to score certain categories, like, you know, resist, resiliency. And we're either, like, super resilient or we're not resilient at all. It's, it's hard to say. Like, if they kill our Molten Vortex, which will, like, almost never happen, then we're, we are in trouble. We're in, like, serious trouble. We just got a grip full of lands. Um, but, I mean, aside from that, I, there's really no resiliency to be had in the deck. We're just, you know, discarding lands for damage. So I'm not really sure how to score certain categories here. But don't let the 52 fool you. The deck actually has a lot of strong points which I'm going to go over right now, sort of some, some reasons to be excited about this deck, because the more I looked into it, the more I researched it, the more I played with it, because I played a few games with it, um, the, the more you sort of start to understand why the deck is good in this meta right now. Well, first of all, the deck is unto itself a clock, you know. Um, very often, your first few turns are just going to be, you know, turn one Molten Vortex in a land, and then you just start discarding lands for damage, you know, against certain aggro decks like a Tarka Red. That can be extremely powerful. You can just wipe the board um, every turn, you know. It's a couple of lands discarded. There goes, you know, two of your guys. And it's just it, it really good against some of the aggro decks in the format. Um, people are saying this is a two-deck format, and those two decks are Dark Jeskai. People call it Jeskai Black. Um, or Green White Megamorph. People say that that's the other deck in the format, although it's been sort of faltering in, in the tournament brackets lately, but it's still top eights very, very consistently. And against both those decks, we have a great game. You know, against Jeskai, we can kill Jace very easily with a Molten Vortex. We can kill Soulfire Grandmaster really easily with a Molten Vortex. And there's just, it, we do a lot of good stuff. A lot of those decks play um, a one or two copies of Dragon Master Outcast in the main board. Sometimes they relegate it to the sideboard, but it's always in the 75 somewhere. And again, Molten Vortex kills that before you have to really worry about it. 
So just so much going for the deck in the removal department, and obviously it's good against green white megamorphs because morphers it kills more. You know, this molten vortex takes you know takes care of morphers handily. You know, don't have much to worry about there. It kills dead protector after he's flipped up, and a lot of different stuff. You know, it's just really good against both of the quote unquote top decks in the format, and we see a lot of control decks in the format. The deck is a really good clock against control, especially game one, where they essentially don't really have that many tools against you, and you're leaving all of their creature removal just dead in their hand, you know? The best they can hope to do against you is drop a Planeswalker or an Ojutai, something like that, but you're able to take out Planeswalkers pretty easily with a Molten Vortex, and Ojutai, once he swings in, two lands, you know, that kind of sucks that we're being two for one in that situation, but that's why we have Rending Volley in the sideboard, it's specifically to deal with Ojutai. So there is that. Um, but again, those are some of the most important decks in the entire format. And we have some kind of interesting game against every single one of them. You know, again, Abzan is probably our worst matchup, or really anything that plays the Rhino, or anything that goes very wide. You know, things that play a lot of tokens. But we've got Boiling Earth on the side to deal with that. You know, we've, we've got tools for our bad matchups. But for the most part, we do well against Aggro. We do well against Jeskai, very, very important deck in the format. We do well against Green White Megamorphers, that's also important. You know, Atarka Red is something that you see a lot of right now still in the format. This takes care of all of its creatures well. So just, we've, it's, we've got surprisingly deep game against a lot of the good decks. Well, that's all I got. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely worth five bucks. You know, skip lunch and go buy this. I have to keep saying this, it top aided an invitational, you know, there's going to be people like, this deck looks terrible, it does, it does look terrible, but it's super fun, and it reminds you of, like, Seismic Assault from back in the day, and it's just, it's surprisingly versatile. Well, what are we doing next time? Definitely black-white control. That's, it's going to happen. You know, I was going to schedule to release that one tomorrow, but I had to, I had to do this. I mean, I had to actually do this. I had to. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, do us a favor, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things, especially subscribe if you haven't done that yet. We're pushing hard at 10,000. I want to make it, like, so bad. I feel it. I'll see you guys next time, right? I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thank you for watching my Wizards. <laughs>